Hi, I'm Michelle, Director of Educational Content and Programs at Shape America. And if you want to learn more about health and physical education, you are going to love Toy Talk Tuesdays. And I'm not talking about these kinds of toys. I'm talking about Teachers of the Year. Shape America Teachers of the Year represent the best adaptive physical education, dance, health and physical education teachers in the United States and you get to hear directly from them. So make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss an episode and be sure to comment below with the tips and resources you want to hear about most. And if you're interested in learning about how to become a Shape America Teacher of the Year, just make sure to click the link right here below. Thanks so much for watching. Welcome to Toy Talk Tuesday. My name is Julie Frank. I'm the executive director at Spark and I'm delighted to serve as today's host. Today's segment will focus on little or no equipment activities for in-person physical distancing and virtual seating. I'm joined today by Sally and Courtney and I will give them each an opportunity to briefly introduce themselves. Hi guys, I'm Sally Schulte. I am the 2019 Central District Elementary Physical Education Teacher of the Year, and I am currently teaching at Green Tree Elementary K through six in Wentzville, Missouri. I'm Courtney Teacher. I'm the 2017 Southwest District Elementary Physical Education Teacher of the Year. Um, I am currently at Stevenson Elementary in Mesa, Arizona, which is also K six of the Shape America Teacher of the Year community, you have a unique platform to share your expertise, talents, and leadership with health and physical education teachers across the country. We are so proud of your accomplishments and appreciate you participating today. I'll now turn the program over to Sally to kick us off. All right, well, a little bit about Wentzville, Missouri, where I'm at. We are currently hybrid, so we see our students two days in person, one day is completely virtual and the other two are at home learning. Um, so I wanted to share a couple of activities that I have been using in the classroom with the students um, just to give you guys some more ideas there. So this first one I found um, from a document which I'll show you in a minute. It's actually from Asphalt Green and the game is called Up, Down, Stomp, Clap. I have modified it many different ways and I've used it with K through six and they all really enjoy it. And I have my own personal kids down here to kind of help us um, show you guys how the game works. So I have the students sit in their chairs, depending on the structure of the classroom, or you can also have them sit on the floor, whatever works for the space that you're in. But up simply means stand up, down simply means sit down, stomp, you stomp one time, clap, you clap one time. So I'll go through it really quick with my kids just so you see it. All right, girls, you ready? Okay, up, stomp, clap, down, up, down, stomp, clap, up, up, down. Nice job, thanks girls. Okay, so that's the first round. With the bigger um, kids, definitely with second grade through sixth grade, they actually have an opposites round, which is a lot of fun. So instead of, up and down, you would have them do the opposite. So when I say up, you sit down. When I say down, you stand up. Kids really enjoy it. It's a great way to start the class. Uh, it's a great transition activity. Um, so check it out. It's a great one. Up, down, stomp, clap. All right, this one, conductor. I love this activity. It follows along again with the listening skills. Um, basically what you need is four different colored hula hoops and you are going to have each hula hoop represent a different type of movement. So green, for example, which I have in here is sit, uh, red was stomp, blue is clap, and purple is lay down. You can use this outside, you can use this um, in the classroom in their own personal space. You don't even have to use hula hoops, you can just use poly spots, whatever, honestly, you have space and equipment for. Um, when you're outside, you could use chalk as well, whatever really works for you. But basically what you do, you are the conductor of the band and the students are the instruments. And each color that you stand in represents the movement or the instrument that they have to play. So you can do combos, um, very easy in the beginning, you just step in one color and then you start combining the movements. So you would step in two hoops and then you could do um, all the way up to four and then you could also have them follow patterns. There's lots of different ways to play this game. Um, and I found this off of a blog 
uh, Laurie's Little Monkeys. And it's a really great game. I play it with K through five and they really enjoy it. And then you can also have the students break off into groups once they understand how to play and have you know the kids be the conductor and have two or three or four kids be the band. So there's lots of different ways to use this one as well. All right, next activity. Okay, Simon says, I actually just found this on Twitter the other day. And the reason why I added this to this is because I feel like it just follows the trend kind of with what I was presenting and sharing with you all. So this is um, Coach Matham, I hope I'm saying that correctly. And he shared this on Twitter and it's Simon Says with Poly Spots. So very similar, you use the same colors, but you just um, do the Simon Says actual type game. So you start with one and then you add on two and then you add on three. Um, and they have two girls here in the video that are playing the game and then one person is the lead Simon. So this could be played outside, this could be played inside, in the gym, in the classroom, in the hallway. Anywhere, honestly, where you have space, you could use poly spots, you could use hoops, you can use chalk. There's just lots of different ways to modify this one as well. And I thought it was a good one that kind of represents the listening and the, and the motor movements. So this document is actually something that um, myself and some Missouri teachers through MoShape and Desi, we put this together over the summer. So this was our COVID-19 uh, re-entry teacher resource for PE and health teachers for K through 12. We used three different buckets um, that we dumped and linked activities into. And one of those was in the classroom, one was no equipment and one was limited equipment. And it's by grade level. Um, everything is linked to the shape standards. All of the activities are there. Some of them have um, the actual videos to show you how to do the activity. And the up, down, stomp, clap activity actually came from this resource. And on top of those buckets, we also have uh, guidance just from shape and from, you know, wherever it is that you might live. We try to be universal with that. And then we have just general resources, which are the big ones, especially our shape people who are amazing and share so much. We put some of their resources in there and where to find them. And then we also have an SEL page that just has lots of different links to use for SEL type pieces. So this is linked um, in the slides, and I hope that you guys get a chance to look at some of them. And that is really all that I needed to share. So I will send it over to Courtney. Okay, so I'm not as fancy as Sally. Um, so we are kind of discussing, you know, what, what our picture is or what our viewpoint is. And um, like I was on the curriculum team for my district and we also have a document like that. Unfortunately, it's like district owned, so I couldn't share it with you guys, but I could share the activities that we put together. So we are a DPE, Dynamic Physical Education, which now is like our gopher link through everything with Shape America. So you can go on the link page of ASAP and find a lot of these video resources that we watched and modified. And I know some of the intros are highlighted. Um, so those have videos that you guys can see how we did it to modify like our, our 20 minute lesson. So we started off as remote only in our district. And now we phase into hybrid, but our specialists, we are still remote. So we are still teaching with little or no equipment. So we've done basically nine weeks with a pair of socks. Um, you know, so your creativity is definitely um, high up there. And I will put it out there, like if someone wants to email me or touch base with me, I'll send them one of my, you know, what I call my ridiculous videos that I have to record for my students to send. Um, but even when I record my segments, I still do it in the four part lesson. Um, and then the, the change that we kind of made is we added in these SEL activities. Um, so that way we're bringing in that component because we know this is just an uncharted territory of, of time. So if we just look at the categories of our SEL breathing, if you guys Google some of these, they'll come up as Go Noodle or some YouTube and it will be on there. And like we recorded all of ours individually, um, taking the ideas off. So they're always seeing our teacher for that face-to-face -face contact of who we are. Um, and the biggest one that we use a lot is the star breathing. So that way, if you need that break or you need that water break, we'll just say, show me your star breath. Okay, let's get started again. So it brings you back um, to, to, to together so you can just start going. 
And then if we move on to our component of intros, um, it says move and assume shape. And I know a lot of these are K2, but for how I adjusted it for like the four six, is if we were doing like our strength stretching activities, then our like move and assume shape was a tree pose, or we're gonna do a balance challenge, or we're gonna do a combination movement that fit with that lesson component, so it wasn't always the, the same thing. Um, so then again, in our intros, we did all of those. And then our fitnesses, we would do teacher leader, we would have, you know, teacher leader one, teacher leader two, same thing with Astro and um, like our fitness challenges. And then of course we just made them age appropriate um, and you moved up into your different developmental levels. And if you again go on to the dynamic PE, there's videos in there of how to do that. Okay, so then on here, um, we also went through orientation and some people are like, you guys really did that. And we're like, yeah, because we still needed to get our kids into that, that mindset of really, what are we doing? Why is it different? And we're at home too, right along with you to, you know, to do and learn all of these new things. Um, and I think rhythms was probably one of my favorites because I just moved the whole time and you weren't like trying to get the kids involved. They were just kind of going with you. And then this week I did actually chair aerobics and I taught it to my kids outside of the box of that four part lesson is I said, you know, we're going to do like the health club model. You want to go do a body pump class or you want to go do a group fitness with friends. This is what this looks like. And so that's how I modeled it like in my house. Um, so that way, you know, the kids are kind of getting like I say bored and stale of kind of no equipment, same, same thing, same process. So that was a really good boost for me this week of doing these chair exercises. And I actually sent some of these out to my staff and said, hey, you guys sitting around today remote teaching? Like do a chair exercise. And I actually had someone email me back. She's like, I was huffing and puffing in between my meetings. She goes, it took me three times to do it. She goes, I'm gonna do this every day because she's sitting there in these meetings, you know? So, um, and then in here, you know, juggling. Well, we use tissue or paper towel or a grocery bag. So that way at least we could do some manipulative skills with something our kids didn't have to purchase or they should have had. And then now that we went back hybrid, I know that their breakfast comes in a small grocery bag. So we didn't even have to ask the students to bring something from home because that was another big thing. We just asked that they kept their breakfast bag so that way we had that manipulative and they could just be thrown away at the end of the day um, to kind of do some of those juggling skills or eye tracking skills with technically non-equipment. Um, I feel like I should ask anybody who has questions, but it's not that format. Um, and then if we move over to the games, um, some of them are kind of self-explanatory, but we had one of our teachers do hot potato individual. So we did that with our um, sock ball. So we would play music, and if the sock ball, you had it, then you either stood up or sat down. Or if you had the hot potato, you had to do a sit up or a push up, and then we started again. So that way you could still play that manipulative game rather than it be a group activity. Um, and then that's kind of how we just rotated through some of the games to try to make it more, more individualized. So that's all I have for you with, with what we're kind of doing in the format that we rolled out for our district. On behalf of Shape America and the Shape America Teacher of the Year Partner Network, thank you Sally and Courtney for sharing these ready to use activities, tips and tricks. Be sure to visit www.shapeamerica.org to check out our bi-weekly Toy Talk Tuesday segments for more great resources from our Shape America Teacher of the Year community.